Hello everyone, uh, Dave Strains commented on one of my videos a little while back. Uh, I'm going to send you some stuff. The stuff came through today and it's really nice. I got the CN box car. Everything's perfect. It's like new. And this Pennsylvania covered hopper. Also super nice. And uh, the Pennsylvania crane. That's going to go well with my Penn Central stuff. So I always wanted one of these. And uh, that came through. And it's new. Everything's new and in good shape. And I got this baggie with the Backman uh, 060. So we're going to work on that today. This probably the second worst engine that Backman ever made. Uh, I recommend that you don't uh, buy one. So uh, it's got the tender in the box. You can see the, the two wheels here are out of their place. The locomotive cannot run like that. So um, I can fix this. The issue with this isn't really all that stuff. The issue with it is that it's too light and uh, it cannot pull many cars. The motor is actually pretty good. That motor is a pretty good little motor and the gears are okay, although they crack and then everything falls out. I'm going to be fixing that with some crazy glue that should get me out of the trouble. So I should be able to get this to run. Also, there was the tender in there with a couple of other little parts. They make a 262 Prairie type out of the same uh, basically the same engine just they add a couple of wheels it uh, the extra wheels don't really help anything so this screw i think is going to allow me to release the boiler let me play with that a little bit also this little screw on top that's also going to help me to uh, release the boiler This thing has got all the bells and whistles. You can see the whistle here and the bell. And this little guy here is a pop valve. So once you have the screw out, you can just pull on this very gently. And that's gonna release the shell. This little plastic part, it insulates the motor from everything else. So it's good to keep it around. And then we're gonna work from uh, under the uh, the frame here. So we're going to pry very gently to release the um, the main driver here from the rods. So just take your time, go very gently. It's actually not that hard to, to remove them. So that's good. And then this will go with the, uh, the valve gear. And then do the same thing for the other side. There we go. So this two it will stay in there for a little bit. These two they'll stay in there for a little bit. So all the valve gears, it uh, goes up together, everything at the same time goes up here and it goes around uh, around everything so just pull it wiggle it out one thing at a time so the wheel will fall off that's okay we'll catch it later we'll put it back later so when these go bad, a lot of people, what they do is they just uh, put extra lubrication. That's okay. It really doesn't change anything. So if, um, if the front, the number one axle was still okay, I would have my wheels in there. Now they're just going to fall out. That's okay. Uh, if what I'm doing today, I wouldn't really have to remove it. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to run the engine without all the connecting rods and valve gears 
This is just a very small pin. And it fits over the side rod. I'll show you what the pin looks like. It's very small, so don't lose it. That, I'm gonna say, is the difficulty level for an end scale steam engine. Everything is very small. If you drop this on the floor, it's gonna be tough to find it. Although you might get lucky with a magnet, because it is uh, magnetic, so that too can help. And then I got all my wheels freed. It's a pretty good looking engine. I mean, I'm not knocking uh, Backman engines. Most of them are good. So I'm gonna take the two wheels off. It's gonna give me a chance to clean them. The two wheels are held together with these two, uh, two screws. It's a very fine screw. So I need my really small, 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 small screwdriver. So that's going to release this plate, which will help me to release uh, these two uh, axles. So this is a very entry level uh, engine, very basic, but it's a good runner. The worst drawback is it will not pull uh, that many cars. So with the axles out, it's a split frame. This screw here, it holds the motor down. It doesn't look too important, but it holds the motor down. I know I guess the truck pins aren't magnetic. So we do not want to drop them. So I can open up uh, the frame at this point and this will release my idler gears and my, uh, my motor. Yeah, there's lots of parts on there, so that's why uh, N-scale steam engines are expensive. It's all these extra parts. Then I'll drop the screw, just to make sure I can find it when I need it. And then that should split open. There's a little, uh, this is the uh, power reverse. That can stay there, it's just glued on there. Doesn't really get into the way of anything. I'm gonna remove my screw that holds the motor down. Right now, not very important. And then you have the two frame halves with your two uh, idler gears. The front uh, axle actually is doesn't have a gear. It's non-powered and it doesn't have a gear. So it just gets uh, moved by the, um, it gets moved by the connecting rod, just like the real steam engine. So that's kind of neat. So I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna start cleaning everything. So to clean everything, I use my toothbrush and a little bit of, um, of soap and some water. And then this is what the motor looks like. You can't really mess it up. There's a screw for the bottom one. So uh, I suppose I should test this uh, on the bench. So maybe this was open before, but uh, there's a, a bearing here for the worm gear shaft. And there's there wasn't a bearing at the front here. So uh, that's a little strange. Maybe it runs like that. 
Uh, I'm going to put it back together like that and we'll find out. If it doesn't run well like that, uh, I can make a new bearing for it. So before I start washing everything, I'm going to fix this part. This is the number one driver and it is cracked. That's why the wheels don't really stick together. I'm going to leave it up to you, maybe you want to replace it with some tubing. You can use plastic tubing or brass tubing. I'm just going to be content using, I don't know if you can see the crack. It's not very big, but it's there. So all I do with these is uh, I'll just glue them back together with some crazy glue. That's going to ensure that uh, the wheels stay in place. The other axles, they don't really look broken. I think we're gonna be okay there. What I'll do is I'll clean everything, put it back together, but minus um, the valve gear, then we can see how it runs. So that all that hard work you go through to fix up this engine and you end up only pulling two to three cars. So I'll let you be the judge. I just put just a tiny little dab and that should help it uh, to stay in place. One time I put a picture like that on Facebook and I, I asked people on Facebook, I forgot how to put it back together, can you help me? So uh, the responses were kind of funny. So I am going to put it back together. While I have everything in my hand, I'm going to get out the old uh, micro trains. Uh, gauge you can see it's a little bit tight so I'm going to readjust that so as I spread them apart I have to be mindful that there's a timing to these see this one it's uh, sitting up they're a quarter turn away from each other and the other one has this angle like that so one's like that the other one, the other side is like that. So that is very important. And uh, the backman, they have good details. I'm not knocking the details on this engine. In principle, it's a really good engine. Just, uh, I buy engines from backman. I have the 280, which I really like. And I have the mountain, the 284. No, it's the other way around, 482, the mountain, which I really like. But just these, uh, I'm upset because they don't pull many, many trains. So putting this back together, I have my little gear, which is somewhere in here. And this is the main one with the reducer. And then the other little one. Did a little one that was just hiding in plain sight. They are, uh, there, there are uh, small parts in there. The motor, I tested it on my bench. There's no problem. It's actually a good little motor. It's small, so it doesn't make that much torque, but for uh, considering the other problems that that engine has, it's, uh, it fits with the rest. It's not actually the weak point of the, the thing. Then I can bring in uh, the other frame half. Don't forget about these two little uh, insulators here. If the frame halves uh, touch each other, there will be a short circuit and that would be bad. Now I'm going to bring in my two screws. You just need to tighten them uh, hand tight. They don't have to be uh, all that uh, tight. The secret is you check it uh, every step of the way. You check it on the bench. Turns out I need this little screw just to hold the motor down. 
it looked pretty innocent but uh, it's not it's pretty important actually and it also allows me to have maybe a little bit of adjustment forward and back so let's try it on the bench so i'm just going to put the power to it i'm using a very low voltage so if there's any interference i'll know so essentially this allows me to go on to the next step so i'll add one wheel and then i'll check it so that's good then i'll add the other wheel and i'll check it again that's going good the third wheel uh, doesn't have any gears but uh, before I get ahead of myself I have to time these these have to be a hundred percent timed together uh, very precisely so number one axle that's not a problem it doesn't have any gears but the number two are precisely timed and you can see on both sides again same thing everything's very precise so I can put my plate back on this plate here with the two screws that go with it so it's working well on the bench now uh, I'm going to try it uh, on the track. So I'm going to put power to it. Well, it looks like we have a runner. So like I said, I buy engines for Backman all the time. My main complaint with these is they don't pull enough cars. They're just too light. So the valve gear will draw a little bit of power from this. So uh, it's going to run a little bit differently, but uh, I think we're going to make it. So I'm going to be using my main rod as a tool to install my pin. So that end scale, it's again, it's very small parts. So not always easy so I'm just gonna get it started and then once it's started I'm gonna come in with my, uh, my thumbnail and I'll pin it down so once it's started I'm gonna come in with my my thumbnail I'm just gonna pin it down there that should be good and I'm going to do the same thing with the other side my two connecting rods can hang down like that while I bring in uh, the rest of the valve gear so this I have to shimmy it around here they do uh, spread out quite a bit so I have to shimmy it around here there's uh, places where they hang so these squares here, the valve gear will hang on this. So you just gotta shimmy it around, take your time. It's not, uh, it's not easy this part. So just let everything hang down. Eventually it will get uh, where it's supposed to go. It's supposed to look like that. You also need to put in your pilot beam at this time. So it's, it's sandwiched between the cylinders and the frame of the engine. And we just have to put that final screw that holds uh, all this stuff, all this neat stuff uh, together.
Now we can do the final assembly uh, of the valve gear. So just let everything hang down. So the first one to come in is going to be this main rod here. It has to go under everything else. So you bring that one in first. And then your piston rod that goes in second. And then the actuator for all the valves that goes in third. So I will use the rod from the piston as a tool to bring in uh, to bring in the pin over everything. I use the motor to line up my wheels so that the journals at the bottom that just helps me get in there just a little bit. So this requires a little bit of patience. When I started it, nobody said it was going to be easy. So I have to bring everything together. And that's going pretty well, actually. Can't complain. So uh, it doesn't matter what steam engine you get, they all have about the same uh, difficulty getting this done. I could do it off camera, but I think you guys want to see uh, how I do it. it. Just takes a little bit of patience. Bring this rod back just a little bit there. There's no, uh, there's no easy way to do this. Now it's in, so there's a timing to this. My, my, um, my journal is all the way down. So these, how they go, you put them 90 degrees from the axle to the journal, and then you take it back just one eighth of a turn. And that's it. One side is done, and I can go work on the other side. So then uh, I also tested on the bench to make sure uh, everything's going okay. So far, so good. So I put the tender back together quickly, and now it's time to run some trains. So a big thank you again to Dave's trains. Uh, receiving this package really made my day yesterday. So uh, I did spend the whole video complaining about how many cars can this uh, locomotive pull. So let's do that. Let's find out how many cars can it pull. I like to use these. They're a pretty standard uh, Backman freight car. They have metal wheels, so they're pretty uh, free rolling. So I ended up being able to pull uh, six cars uh, plus a caboose so that's a little more than I had ex expected so I'm pretty pleased with that hope you enjoyed the video I certainly had fun making it for you
see you soon.